as we continue our discussions of baptism and the different way that baptism is practiced in the church today. We're at the Lutheran Church of the Ascension, Augusta Victoria, on the Mount of Olives. And this is, a, again, a Lutheran church that was built to commemorate Jesus' ascension. And just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples this from Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. He ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. This is the word of the Lord. So we, of course, can recognize that this is the first generation of the church. This is Jesus and his disciples. All the disciples, the requirement of being one of the disciples was that you were baptized, or at least with Jesus, from the baptism of John all the way through the rest of his earthly ministry. And because of this, the Holy Spirit hadn't yet descended on the disciples. And so every single one of them received a water baptism, probably at the hands of John the Baptist, and then also received the baptism of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And there are still many Christians today, especially in America, that believe in two different baptisms. They would distinguish between the water baptism, which they would say has little to no effect on your eternal salvation, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is where they're going to put their money. They say that's where the real work of God is, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, the types of churches in America that practice this would tend to be Assemblies of God, uh, Pentecost. Uh, these are all kind of falling from a Pentecostal background. And the whole Pentecostal movement really is only about 100 years old. And it's, it's a pretty American thing. There are now Pentecostal churches all over the world, but those are mostly derived from American missionaries going and starting churches in other parts of the world. But it is a very important for them to distinguish between the water baptism and the baptism of the Spirit. And they would say, if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you may or may not be saved. And of course, it depends on which Pentecostal you're talking to. But one of the key features that they're looking for is the speaking in tongues, because that is what they hold to as their sacrament. It is the big thing. If you can speak in tongues, that is proof positive you are a true Christian. And some Pentecostals would go so far as to say, if you are not speaking in tongues, you are not a Christian. Uh, but again, uh, from a Lutheran perspective, this kind of confuses baptism because we believe that when God's word is spoken at someone's baptism, that God's Holy Spirit is doing the work of the baptism. He is giving someone true faith. And so we don't want to separate the water baptism from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We see them as one and the same because it is all God's work as he gives us faith. And the only way anyone can have true and saving faith is by the working of the Holy Spirit. And please pray with me. Spirit and giver of life, thank you for breathing life and love into us through our baptism. Equip us with your love for others. Help us to share with them the good news of baptism, the work that you do in baptism. Even when we talk with those, especially of other traditions and the Pentecostal tradition, may we speak with them of baptism and love and respect that we would grow in our understanding of baptism and that they also may use us to touch them with the blessings of holy baptism. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings on your day. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Click the icon to subscribe or explore more of our video lessons on our channel.